Hello, Akim here again with uh, Tech of Experts. Today, I'm talking. I'm going to talk to you about uh, painting exposed ceilings and uh, doing tech ops for uh, exposed ceilings. So, ceilings are designed for various purposes. You know, some are decorative, some are practical, uh, some are like just drop ceilings and bulkheads, etc. But whatever the architect's aim is, your job as a painting contractor is to get the project by bidding on it and for that you need to know uh, what your market pricing is once you have found out your market pricing and once you have determined that this is what you are going to be charging per, per square foot you can get your uh, uh, your drawings measured and then you can bid on the project because um, there is a lot of money to be made in painting exposed ceilings if you have some good painters who know how to use scissor lifts and are ticketed. So if you have been a painter for at least three to five years, you probably already know uh, that there's good money to be made in painting exposed ceilings, but you may be at a stage where you are still reluctant on bidding on exposed ceilings, just because um, you are having difficulty measuring uh, uh, drawings for large complicated buildings. So in this video, I want to just encourage you to bid on large um, projects which have exposed ceilings to be painted. Whether you want to bid on it as the direct painter yourself or whether you want to take it on as a subcontractor from another larger painting company. So I'm going to be referring to my notes over here today. Um, before I, I go on, I just want to emphasize something very important and that's safety training. You know, the safety training certificates are very important and for me it paid off in the long term because I sent my painters to get um, fall safety training and aerial work platform training done and I got it myself also, so I got a ticket for myself also. Uh, there are a lot of construction companies which will not allow uh, your painters to work on their projects if you don't have those those tickets or those safety training certificates they will not allow you to get up on a scissor lift for example so the site supervisor will not allow your painters to get up on a scissor lift to uh, paint those ceilings if you if they don't have the tickets so do not take shortcuts for this issue uh, get as many painters in your crew certified as possible and don't just rely on your one lead painter to have a you know to have a scissor lift or a boom lift ticket because if he quits then you are stuck right and some contracting companies will just not allow your painters to get up on a scissor lift if they don't have the, the tickets so when it comes to uh, painting um, exposed ceilings my price per, per square foot for a ceiling such as the one that you see here for a supermarket was around four dollars per square foot so that included the labor and the materials. So you can see that this ceiling here is just a typical exposed ceiling. It's off-white or white in color, and it has the usual ducting, the usual trusses and so on. It's all just one color. Um, so two coats of dry fall should, should do the trick. So for something like that, I was charging $4 a square foot. But you have to find out what your pricing is in your particular market, in your city or in your area. The important thing is to have the ceilings measured properly because there are also some other ceilings in these projects to paint which are drywall, right? And uh, those are much, much cheaper at around $1.50 per square foot. But if you look at this next animation over here, there are a lot of substrates on the ceiling. If the whole ceiling is going to be just one color, then you can bid on it for a square foot only. There's no need to measure the trusses, etc. So when we were bidding, I priced uh, ceilings like this up to $5 per square foot if the ceilings had a lot of surface area to paint. So lots of trusses and lots of uh, ducting and, and other pipes uh, that were going to be of the same color. But for color-coded pipes, such as the list that you see here on the screen right now, you know, uh, this is taken from a spec manual, brown for HVAC, yellow or orange for gas pipes, 
glue for water pipes and so on, we measure the piping separately in linear fit. And I priced them at six to ten dollars per linear foot, depending on the girth and the difficulty in painting. So some pipes are very, very tight together and just they just take longer to paint. And I was pricing them at ten dollars per hour in light industrial settings, you know, like water pump stations and so on. Um, when we painted yellow pipes, we had to apply, uh, of course, a coat of gray tinted primer and three coats of yellow, at least three coats. The same thing with blue, you know, two coats were never enough. But when we painted ducts that had uh, canvas wrapped, that, uh, you know, ducts that were canvas wrapped, one coat of gray block filler and two coats of gray or off-white or brown, whatever, were sufficient because canvas retains a lot of paint. So the job goes much faster because you can put on a lot of paint in, in one shot. You know, you don't have to keep on backrolling it too much. On the other hand, smooth metal pipes uh, take very little paint. Uh, so they need at least one extra coat. With orange pipes, for example, we had to do four top coats. So in some projects, the gas pipes are orange and in some projects, the architect specifies that the, the gas pipes have to be yellow. So we do take a, we do read the, the spec manual and find out what the, the color is going to be because it's important to get the right color, right? If the pipes are orange rather than yellow, then you should be using orange for the gas pipes. I don't know why there is this variation though. Sometimes in some projects the gas pipes are yellow and in some projects the gas pipes are orange. But we just follow the spec manual and we do accordingly. Anyway, so you can see on the screen here the pipes in various colors on this rendition, blue, yellow, orange and so on. So after measuring all of these pipes in linear fit, we transfer the numbers onto a spreadsheet uh, for the painting contractor so that he can easily build his bid. So all the formulas are set up and the totals are done automatically to arrive at the final bid. Now regarding painting these high ceilings, um, there's this issue of um, using a scissor lift. You know, when I was doing certain projects uh, with a certain GC, I knew that the GC had their own scissor lifts so I would put in my bid that the contractor shall provide scissor lifts to my painter for uh, painting the ceilings and other high walls. Um, if the GC is not going to be providing the scissor lifts then you need to add around $800 per week because it costs about $800 to rent a you know, 25 to 30 feet uh, scissor lift. Uh, plus you need uh, $150 each way for delivery. So that was the pricing in my city. In your city it might be $50 more or less, whatever it is. And so you can, you can add that to your bid, to your painting bid. Uh, so it's always good to use the GC scissor lift if possible because they usually have those scissor lifts there anyway. But it's better to make that agreement with them ahead, ahead of the bid. One last important thing, uh, after I had been awarded a project, I always made sure to keep a track of the expenses, so the labor and the materials. So I would check, I would monitor the hours that the painters took uh, to paint the surfaces, so as to make my next bid more accurate as far as pricing per square foot and pricing per linear foot was concerned because we can measure the drawings, that's not a problem. We can measure them accurately, but we need to know how much time it's taking the painter to paint each linear foot of pipe. So that's priming in the painting. For example, if my painter finished 100 linear feet of water pipes painting, that is one coat of primer and three coats of blue in say eight hours, then my cost per linear foot would be eight hours times $25 per hour, which is the wage of the painter, which comes to $200 for 100 linear feet. And that translates into $2 per linear foot for labor. So my pricing was at least $5 per linear foot because I added $2 for markup. And then uh, that also includes 
the one dollar for one gallon of paint and one gallon sorry one gallon of primer and one gallon of blue paint so one dollar per linear foot yeah so you can see in the spreadsheet the measurement of the of the exposed ceilings the pipes etc and the bid price the important thing is uh, for you to keep on bidding in order to get some good projects so once you have done a couple of projects you know how how much the production of your painters is as far as painting ceilings is concerned now don't just go only for the easy straightforward jobs because too many painters will be bidding on those jobs and the competition will be too much for the simple projects that don't have any exposed ceiling structures you know they're just like regular plazas and regular offices etc you can bid on those too but you know the amount of money is always less than when you're painting exposed um, ceilings so keep on bidding and get more jobs bid more jobs get more get more jobs that's what i'm trying to say so we'll see you in my next video when i talk about um, wall vinyl um, takeoffs